Welcome everyone, I'm G-Plot Silvermane, and this is a Marvel Strike Force update. Um, I jumped into the game, and it was actually an update, and it's huge. So, before we even get started, I want to say, please like, subscribe to the video, um, help support the channel. We're going for a thousand subs. Um, building my community right now, so, upon hitting that thousand subs, I am going to do a hundred dollar giveaway. Don't know how we're doing it yet, but we are giving it away, giving back to the community. So, uh. Remember to like and subscribe. Like if you like the video, so that way I know what I'm doing you like. Um, before we start, this video is going to be very long. <laughs> um, just prefacing it, it's a huge update inbound. Um, as you can see right here, Doom and Cyborg Gloom. Um, new characters, amazing powers. We're going to dig in deep and we're going to go through all this. Um, bear with me, I'm not going to read everything, hopefully. I'll be able to skip some, I don't know. Just uh, a glancing at it, it's going to be rather long. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get started here. Um, greetings, commanders. Prepare for tech upgrades as this week we're meeting a razor-sharp personality who is sure to get your roster running like well-oiled machine. After getting straight to the point, and after getting straight to the point, we'll be discussing the next raid challenge courtesy of Dr. Doom. Dr. Doom 2 is here, um, as well as announcing the next permanent legendary event. Shining light on blitzes and unearthing a golden opportunity for your mercs. Um, so a lot to do, lot to dive into, a lot to take in, a lot of information here. Uh, Lady Deathstrike. Um, when I was a kid, I had this card, and it was awesome. I mean, it was gross. Look at her fingers and whatnot, you know. So it's like um, this will be interesting to learn about her a little bit. Yuriko Oyama is the daughter of the Japanese scientist and crime lord Kenji Yo Oyama, who developed the process by watching adamantium could be bonded into a human skeleton. Following her father's death, Yuriko, Yuriko, Yuriko sought to restore honor to her father by tracking down and punishing those who stole her father's scientific discovery, including anyone outfitted with adamantium skeleton. So she's going to be after Omega Red, um, Wolverine, obviously, Weapon X. This desire led Yuriko to confront Wolverine after being defeated by Wolverine, Yuriko, had her body outfitted with extensive cybernetic enhancements, including adamantium, bones, and talons. Oh, man. As well as a boost to her strength, agility, and healing factor. Going under the name Lady Deathstrike. Yuriko has worked as an assassin, clashing with Wolverine on many occasions. Lady Deathstrike slots into the Weapon X team as a brawler with solid damage, focus, and speed. All of which are further enhanced in the Alliance War. Um, she's bringing bleeds to the hard to the game, instilling deflex, which... Comes to mind, uh, Shang Chi. He's huge on deflex encounters. Um, all the heroes for hire are actually so. This is going to be probably obviously their counter, right? Um, if nothing else, it'd be a decent thing to think about. Her abilities feed off of bleed, as she receives a different bonus for each of her attacks when targeting an enemy who is inflicted with bleed. Despite being a brawler, Lady Deathstrike. Also brings her key defensive facets to the Weapon X team, such as clearing negative effects and providing immunity for the Weapon X team. She provides bonus focus, as well as heavy bleed resistance for herself as the rest of the Weapon X team. Call your way to victory with Lady Deathstrike. Traits, Villain, Global, Tech, Brawler, Weapon X. Now, Global and Tech, obviously those lanes. There you go. Um, also, Global, for DD, Dark Dimension, um, is huge. So... That's just another option instead of using the Phoenix route that originally everybody rushed to. Um, I'm looking currently for other global options, uh, so I don't have to worry about Phoenix. I get her as a getter, you know? Um, I don't want my farming based on my free-to-play account to be based around legendaries. Um, I want them to be based around challenges, dark dimension, and faster, more efficient ways. <laughs> basic, her basic attack, these are abilities. They're all shown at max. So these are all possible things. You probably will start off with less effects and then gain more as you level it up. But basic is Reaver Revenge. Um, transfer one deflect from primary target to self, which I'm I'm all I can think about is Shang Chi. Because he's the last big one that popped in my brain. And this is huge, right? Um, attack primary target for piercing. Piercing's huge. All right. Um, 250%. If primary target has bleed, repeat this attack plus apply defense down. I'm thinking striker, especially with bleeds being so big on weapon X uh the team uh absolutely put her as strikers when i'm thinking cause she'll apply defense down over and over but i don't know what all the team has to offer so this attack gains 300 percent extra focus um strikers the first thing that comes to mind obviously stealing that deflect is huge 
the special comes out fully ready to operate so i'd probably lead with this personally depending on the bleeds that are applied by other people um deadly weapon gain offensive up gain offense up for two turns attack primary and adjacent targets for 200 percent piercing it's all piercing with her she is oh that's i'm interested to see how that changes the game plus apply two bleed which will help on your primary attack the following turn and reduce speed bar by 20 percent. that's huge speed manipulation is coming into marvel strike force hard um x factor was the they broke open the gates on that right um huge in raid shadow legend speed speed manipulation uh speed bar manipulation is huge in any of these games especially turn base like this <laughs> on kill repeat attack using a new primary target randomly chosen from the previously previous secondary targets so she's hitting them off 200 percent applying bleed and reducing their speed bar but if she finishes somebody off she basically gets to do this again you get what i'm saying um so she essentially could take out three people depending on their bar health bars um and if it planned properly you could go take out the main chooses one of the other two takes it out and then takes out boom and that makes another new main two off this one because it redoes it all um repeat attack using new primary target as randomly chosen yeah so the secondary attack can target stealth targets that's huge um you're not hiding from this she's gonna eat you <coughs> pardon me on this law talking my throat's a little dry all right on kill increase the duration of positive effects on self and all weapon x allies by plus one up to a maximum of five um that's amazing right uh, apparently they think it's going to go over five for some reason i don't know if that's big for dark dimension or what why they keep capping everything at five i don't understand that um if the fight goes that long that's insane um we'll see i guess though uh her ultimate adamantium flurry huge starts at four to six so after two turns you'd want to go special basic than this um is what i'm assuming at least from looking at it kind of seeing the skills here a little bit that would be my recommendation right off the top um attack primary target for 280 percent piercing again plus apply plus one defense down so defense down here and defense down on our special i mean or on our basic and it's just insane the bleeds are everywhere Here's i mean holy smokes they're going out of control with these characters and they're going all out man i'm telling you up to a maximum of two plus apply bleed plus apply two bleed um more bleeds what does bleed even do is that like a five percent of your health or something i don't that's what i always assume bleeds were five or ten percent of your health would be deducted when it became your turn again um bleeds are big with symbiotes um they're based on your attack power, uh, attack power, I think, or your damage that you inflicted when you placed them. I don't know. It's a lot of numbers. Uh, rebound chain to four adjacent targets for 280% piercing. Wow. Plus apply. And this is a rebound chain. This ain't a... Basically, you can bounce back and forth. Boom, 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 boom. Rebounding. Um, it ain't going down the line. Like chain. Like, a, you know what I mean? I'm pretty sure that's what rebound chain means. Plus apply one defense down up to a maximum of two playing two bleeds clear all negative effects from self and all weapon x allies so that's that's just massive um the two meta teams right now uh focus heavily on that and this is going to be huge um apply immunity to self and all weapon x allies so they can't even put them back this attack cannot miss any target that has bleed which they should by the time you cast this <laughs> not to mention i don't know what the other kits are for the other characters um if this character has three or more weapon x allies this attack cannot be countered so basically wolverine i'm gonna be maxing as soon as i possibly can on my main <laughs> passive murderous intent on on turn hill for 20 percent of this character's max health huge i don't know if it's worth making her a healer for that or nothing uh and i think it might be based on hill ability so that's just i would take what you can get out of that when this character drops below 60 percent health gain two death proof can't kill her plus two evade can't hit her gain tw plus 25 percent crit damage so Crit damage, I mean, it's based off critting. So assuming you're going to build her maybe as a raider, you know what I mean? Uh, I don't know. Uh, Weapon X allies gain plus 25% crit damage. So it's going to be a crit kind of team. Um, you're going to have to pick and choose there on your striker and raider, but it's looking crit damage heavy. And this is, to me, new because it's usually plus 20% crit chance or something. You know, it's uh, this is cool. It's just something to me. This is awesome, all right? Um, lower resistance by 50% for all enemies with bleed wow 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 so resistance what are they going to need resisting or what are they going to have to resist I'm, I'm assuming some of your other characters that defense down i guess they could try to resist but 
as you'll see here, they give her war options, but just from everything I've read, it's all been everywhere in the game. The only war is on her passive. Um, which is good, but it's not really making me want to use them in war offense or war defense. Um, I'm assuming this is like the in the war ready trait. I don't know. In war, in war, in war, you can put them on offense or defense. I don't know, but it just cranks up a resistance to like a gajillion and your weapon X allies. Um and their focus gives them a pretty good amount of focus boost so you don't need to go skirmisher necessarily um very much probably doom 2 she's amazing let's wrap her up she's amazing don't sleep on her um doom 2 your alliance's next great challenge arrives with the upcoming version 5.7 release in the form of doom 2 raid i'm not even doom 1 we tried it we got like 20 percent. We, we went back to ultimate 7 7.5 um they're bringing blue isos in and that tab where fire essence was that is what they need to be doing utilizing that to bring us currencies and stuff we need oh i got something in my eye. oh so yeah they're uh they're getting us there but they're also bringing out content that's still something to push you to drive towards um i don't want to be able to do everything in the game otherwise it'd be boring you know i want to have something to work towards the follow-up to Doom 1 will bring a slew of rewards to those strong enough to take on the challenge, including new till gear. Gear Sayer 16 is here. Here are the details on this new raid. Heading your, re your way. Requirements. Alliances can launch as soon as they possess the minimum number of ultimate keys. But each difficulty has minimum requirements. All right, I had to get that out of my eye. Hopefully that's good now. <laughs> Minimum requirements for each character for each character used. The normal version of raid requires tier two, level one, ISO eight, and the requirements increase to tier two, level two for difficulties one and two, and tier two, level three for difficulty three. So essentially you're just gonna have to increase your tier level of your ISOs to move up to level difficulty. So difficulty two and three, you're just gonna have to increase your level your tier tier two level um level one for one level two for two level three for three um essentially which is a lot of blue iso uh and they're not right now at least they're starting to get a little bit better they're starting to give some to us but they're not readily available so it'll be a while um to unlock the next difficulty level your alliance must reach 100 percent completion for the previous difficulty which obviously there would be wells out there that'll do this but i wouldn't look i'm not it's nowhere in my near future for me and my, me or the alliance i'm in doom 2 will have the same trait requirements as doom 1 so make sure your top teams for these traits are equipped with the proper iso 8. so at least they didn't make you change teams and whatnot um or add different characters unless you choose to um so you can keep focusing on the same ones you've already invested your iso 8s into your blues um rewards will not go unrewarded hitting at least 30 percent completion will earn you fragments for the new gear tier 16. so the great can play it the great will get greater and the great will still be great <laughs> pretty much as well as orange elite or fragments raid credits orange elite ability materials whoa that's nice t4s and t2 iso 8 credits of note the amount of teal gear raid or fragments orange the materials and t2 iso 8 credits will remain the same no matter whether you're in rank 1 or rank 24. wow so no matter if you're carrying your alliance or you're being drugged through it so this is where you want to trim off the fat and cut loose to people that ain't doing nothing for your alliance. Um, just saying. Don't be giving them this stuff for free. Obviously, you probably don't have this problem if you're able to even compete in this content. So maybe that's not even a thought that should go through your head. And while teal, teal gear, raid orb fragments, raid credits, rewards will scale as you reach higher completion percentages in the raid and play higher difficulties, the orange ability materials, orange raid orb fragments, and T2 ISO 8 credits earned from do two will stay constant so they will not increase so that must be a good base way so that way people that are doing 30 percent will be able to compete with people that are doing harder percentages and these people won't keep putting a further gap between the two of them um, maybe to help with war i don't know there's a big war update coming <clears throat> maybe it wants to make it more competitive i don't know but that's pretty cool it's instead of making the gap bigger they're giving us ways to gain on the people out in front um yeah, falling short of 30% completion will earn you a smaller amount of raid credits, ability materials, and T2 ISO 8 credits. So you don't even got to 30% this. That is awesome. Finally. 
Um, I guess that never ran through my head, but that would be a great way to solve the problem that Doom 1, we're not able to 30%. We're getting like 20, 25, you know, um, percent, and we're not getting nothing. So we have to go back to Ultimus. Whereas if we were to get at least a portion of it, it might be good enough to keep doing that 20%, you know? Um, huge. Loving that. Great, great addition. <clears throat> and like I said, I did a video back, is Scopely listening? And absolutely, I mean, they... They have turned this game around in three months like i don't know what it did what happened what changed but they're just this game's amazing uh now's the time to be playing till till gear raid orb you guessed it till gear that's what it's gonna contain no way i can see uh oh god what's his name the dude that's always talking kind of looks like wolverine has the beard and stuff the community support guy lead uh, I can just hear him saying that. You guessed it. The left and right pillars will reward basic catalysts. Um, that's those used to be a big bottleneck. So stat catalyst, catalyst parts for damage. See the damage catalyst is where I'm choked right now. I did get a ton of them from the last uh, fire essence and uh, all that. I'm up to about I think 1500, but it uses a ton of them per piece of gear. So it's not even enough to feel safe at all for me anyway. Um. And origin till gear. While the middle pillar will have a 20% chance to reward till unique gear, till mini uniques won't be available via the till gear raid orb, and instead will be found in the store events and via various offers. So there'll be a little bit of a bottleneck on them. But that ain't a terrible thing. You know what I mean? There's a very there's a handful of people out there that can even get to gear 216, I would assume. And by handful, I mean thousands. But considering how many people play this game, you know, that's not very many. Raid Season Points. Doom 2 will feature an updated way to earn Raid Season Points through Raid Participation. While playing Difficulty 1 or higher of Doom 2, your Alliance will earn a bonus of millions of Raid Season Points on reaching 30% completion. Wow. If you reach 60% completion on Difficulty 1, you will still earn as many points as you would have by reaching 100% on Normal. And so on, higher difficulties. This update is meant to prevent Raid Season Points from scaling in ways that would cause alliances to blow past all the existing raid milestones too quickly. All right, I like this. So essentially 60% in difficulty one, 100 in normal. So difficulty two, 60% would be 100% for difficulty one. Same thing. You get what I'm saying? So you're not, yeah, that's awesome. I'm liking it. It's slowing them down. Cause people are getting to the end of the milestones and saying, hey, we want more stuff. We're, you know, we're doing this every day. We want more stuff, we want more stuff. Uh, you're not getting no more stuff. So this is to slow down the Ferraris so that us uh, horses out here in the back can keep up. Um, and it's to keep them with something to achieve. Um, they're going to be getting tons of good loot anyway. That ain't going to hurt nothing. Probably hear some salt on it, I guess. But Experiment X. Dig your claws into Wolverine's wild new costume, teal gear, and other rewards. With upcoming Experiment X event, don't miss this razor sharp opportunity. Spend campaign energy, isotopate energy, and power cores to earn points toward a one day milestone that repeats for 14 days. Rewards include Weapon X costumes, so they're doing it same as Carnage, um, pink phase bits instead of yellow, uh, or gold, whatever you want to call them, teal, orange, and purple gills. So we will be able to get some teal gear, it's looking like. Uh, awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, and of course you need purple and orange. I mean, 98% of the population or 98% of the player base probably does. Um, silver and gold promotional credits. They could always give us more of these. Um, fantastic scopely elite five credits. Now who knows what they give us, but anything would be fantastic. Okay. Um, this is for 14 days and you're going to earn stuff every day. And then on the 14 day one, you're going to earn stuff probably as well. <laughs> At least that's my assumption. It might just be a single thing each day. Um, I don't know how that's going to be set up, but Experiment X is your first opportunity to add Wolverine's Weapon X costume, which I want, to your roster using pink phase bits. That's crazy. They put pink bits on, you know, Weapon X. Unused bits will be converted to costume credits on October 20th at 5 p.m. at a converge conversation. Conversation, yeah. Conversation rate of 60%. So, it's not a conversion rate. It's conversation rate. Um, apparently, it's 60% rate on conversation. No, uh, so you're going to get have the opportunity to get more Weapon X credits than you actually need, I'm assuming that means. Or it might be for the people that don't hit the end to be able to get him. It'll convert them. 
um with the carnage i think it gives you almost the right amount so i'm gonna have to look and see exactly but i don't know that it gives you many more if it does at all um so there was no leeway to miss these uh milestones in the carnage uh frenzy thing to get his costume blitz and gear tier 16 arriving with the version 5.7 release is the next phase of gear progression gear tier 16 until augmented gear i have to say green is my favorite color and i picked uh Oh God, Doctor Strange, uh, Marvel Future Revolution is my main. Uh, and it's because he has a green time stone and he has silver in his hair. So green, teal, you know, same thing. Characters equipped with this new gear will enjoy a major stat boost in battle, which includes enemy teams. One, so enemy teams will have this stat boost as well and gear 216. I believe we've already seen this in the past in raids and stuff. And it was like, um, somebody picked up on it on Doom Raids, which if you're not competing in it, how could you pick up on it unless you were, right? So I believe that's already been happening. Um, one game mode where you could face off against Gear Tier 16 enemies is Blitz. Oh, dear Lord. Commanders who have characters equipped with Gear Tier 15 should be on a lookout for Gear Tier 16 enemies, as you're sure to encounter them in the higher Blitz tiers, which feature more powerful enemy teams. Note that teams in Blitz have had their stats overridden by the system based on Blitz tier. So they're more OP the higher up you are. Maybe 8-3 won't be so easy anymore. Um, if I can set it 8-3 for half my rotation, which is 15, 16 teams. Um, the stats and gear you that you see on opposing teams do not necessarily reflect the actual stats of that team. These stronger enemies could require more attention in battle, so be on alert to ensure you're maximizing your blitz. Wow, we'll have all the details surrounding Teal Gear in the upcoming blog, so keep your eyes peeled. Will do. Um, new permanent legendary event. So who's it going to be? Guesses? All right. Burst out your happy dance because Star Lord's legendary event. Space Ace, Mr. Twerk. You know what I mean? Brown pants because you never know what's going to happen out there. Will soon become our next permanent legendary event. Um, following the upcoming version 5.7 release, Star Lord will drop to four star. Four star unlock. That is awesome. Was Fury a four or a three? I don't know, but that's awesome. And Commanders level 35 plus will have access to Space Ace. And honestly, going with Guardians of the Galaxy, er, Galaxy early on is not a bad idea. Um, I got a train coming by and I do apologize. So hopefully it won't deafen anybody. But Gamora and him now for earlier players, it's not a bad team to think about, you know what I mean? Or to look into. Um, once you reach a tiers requirements, once you reach a tiers requirements, you can jump in and attempt to earn Star Lord shards. Accompanying this update and also available to Commanders Level 35 Plus will be a one time 14 day calendar with Mantis character shards as well as valuable gear and resources. Wow. Also be available to Commanders Level 35 Plus. That's awesome. That is so awesome. Uh, as soon as this update drops, I imagine I'll get it because I'm level 44 on my free to play and 83 on my main. So. I'm assuming everybody's going to get this no matter what. Yeah, obviously. 35 plus. Any commander level 35 plus. Valuable gear and resources. Mantis shards will be fodder. They'll be ultimate food for me on my main, but I need them on my free to play. Uh, that's awesome. Dude, that, Scopely. Wow. Went from uh, wouldn't talk to you if I met you in public to maybe asking you on a date. No. <laughs> Costume update. This is crazy. They're just pumping so much stuff into this game. It's making it fun enjoyable and you know so not to mention i'm gonna go in and get the strike pass and battle pass after this video um we're about two weeks into the thing i'm halfway through absolutely i'm gonna pay for it i always do so there goes you know 40 50 bucks usd but it's uh, a lot of good stuff in there continuing on here costume update if you missed out on iceman's all new all different costume during the all new ice event stay frosty your way soon following upcoming all new, all different costume will be available in the costume store for purchase 50,000 costume credits. So you'll have another chance that I did buy it originally. So I already have that. I want uh, Luke Cage's outfit. He looks just awesome. Upcoming blitzes. Bright blitzes, September 27th, Ironheart, and the Tech Prodigy Blitz. Um, for new players, this is great. Ironheart, all right. Pulverize enemies in Battle Rack. Battle rack up tons of character shards in this power armor prodigy. September 30th, Cloak and Dagger return for the second of the Luminous Blitz. 
Now, if you don't know what the Luminous Blitz is, it's currently going on with Cloak, and it's giving you the credits that you can choose to purchase Cloak or Dagger Shards. Um, I don't know if it's actually giving you shards. I think it's just giving you the credits and tons of good loot. Um, so burn through that, get your achievements. I The only way I think you get shards, actually, or you get actually you get more credits in a red star, I believe. Um, it's like 40,000 credits for first through 10th or something. So you definitely want to go as hard as you can, which I am doing currently. Um, and I'm going to in the next one as well, on the 30th. Um, just like the first one, the usual character shard rewards have been replaced by luminous credits. Use those credits to open either a luminous cloak orb or a luminous dagger. Or I'm going all cloaks. I pulled a six and uh, dagger is only able to get a three. And I spent like a gajillion more stuff on her trying to get her with a five or a six as well. So I'm going to go all cloak and get the men unlock for dagger. Um, that's just my perspective. Each of which rewards five shards for the specified character. Don't miss the chance to recruit rank up powerful new warrior duo. Bonus and flash events. Prepare for arrival of Star Lord's Doom Permanent Legendary, September 27th, going nowhere. Bonus event, earn two times character shards for Guardians Ravagers. Then October 1st, payday events back. And this is what I've been talking about in my free to play series. You got to base your farming and the characters you're going for early on on these events. Um, there's a catalyst, there's a payday, there's a block party, it's gold, materials, resources. Um, you have to focus who you're farming for that. Um, that's a new to play player or new, a new player free to play. Um, if you're spending money, do whatever you want. You know what I mean? Even then I would still focus that, uh, bring back piles of gold. I get 3 million gold from that until they change it to higher. Hopefully huh? that would be even crazier. Bolster your soldiers of fortune, Merc mayhem bonus event, filter your roster by mercenary. Absolutely. I'm still trying to, uh, yeah, I believe I'm getting 3 million off the look. I don't want to say something I don't mean, because I'm still farming Mercenary Lieutenant and uh, oh, I can't. Taskmaster. I got them both at 6, and I'm going towards 7. So I don't know if I'm getting 3 million or what it is. Until next time, good luck, Commander. And seeing how this video has gone on forever, I hope you got some information out of it. Um, there was a lot to go through, and there's a lot of talking, a lot of thinking. Um, looking forward to the new character. Adamantine Claws scare me, and why will I have nightmares tonight? Um, I hope you all sleep well. I hope you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe. Um, much love and stay real.